Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning and a very warm welcome to St. James's Church Piccadilly. Welcome to those in the building and a warm welcome to those joining us online. Today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And you are especially welcome this morning, especially welcome if this is your first time here or your first time in a long time. As we've gathered probably from all across London and beyond, just take a moment now to wish the person next to you a very happy Easter. We hope that everybody has an order of service so that you can follow the prayers and the music. And there is also some music at the end. The entire congregation is invited to sing the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah, especially if you think you can't sing. <laughs> you are especially warmly invited to join in the Hallelujah Chorus. For those of you who happen to read music, there is some music which you can collect from the back. So let's take a moment now to contemplate the awesome mystery of the resurrection, to set aside all that distracts us and prepare to pray together. Eternal God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The risen Christ appeared to the disciples behind the closed doors they had locked out of fear. Let us make our confession to God, acknowledging all that separates us from Christ, risen from the dead today. Ever-loving God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God who is both power and love forgive you and free you from your sin, give you healing and strength, and raise you to new life in Christ. Amen.
let us pray. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open. In Jesus Christ, amen. amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Listen for what the Spirit is saying.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Don't hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. There is a platform here so you can see me. (laughs) As it is Easter, and to check that we are all now fully awake after the intensity of Holy Week, there is some congregational participation required for this sermon. When you hear me say, can you believe it? please respond by turning to the person next to you and saying, Christ alive! (laughs) Shall shall we try that? (laughs) Can you believe it? Christ alive! (laughs) May I speak in the name of the Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Week, some may say, is a bit like that latest TV show you've binged watched and then gone back to watch all over again to check that what really happened actually happened. For me, that was the show One Day, the epic love story between Emma and Dexter, 
that spanned 20 years with a fabulous soundtrack and some wonderful set pieces. And instead of that bag of popcorn or two, nachos and a variety of vegan dips that ended that particular period of binge watching, we are instead met at the end of this week's journey of head and heart with a greater promise of and vision for life. This past week, we have been immersed in the story of friendship, of celebration, of betrayal, of pain, and of death. And now we face an empty tomb. In case we are in any doubt that what happened really did in fact happen, Peter reminds us we are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. Can you believe it? One scholar writes, in the canonical gospels, Jesus' resurrection is both the object of faith and a concrete event. The empty tomb questions the status quo and our expectations. Mary Magdalene, Simon Peter, and the other disciple did not expect to see an empty tomb. They didn't understand this disruption in their logic model, a model which sought to evaluate and measure what had happened over the past six intense days. Something had happened to the order of things. The tomb that was meant to hold finality reveals something altogether more disturbing. Whatever Mary Magdalene was carrying, whatever past shame and current grief, her presence at this dawn reveals that she has been brought into a new place. Shame and grief have been brought into an environment of grace. Can you believe it? Also this week here in the UK, the classicist Mary Beard, the former Home Secretary Amber Rudd, Channel 4 news presenter Kathy Newman and the new Labour peer Aisha Hazarika are among the first names to have been put forward to the Garrick Club as possible future members. Also on the list are the actor Juliet Stevenson Margaret Cassidy Hayford, who chairs the trustees of the Shakespeare's Globe and is Chancellor of Coventry University, and Elizabeth Gloucester, formerly an appeal court judge. The Garrick, a private members club, an 11 minute walk from here, or seven minutes if you're filled with resurrection fire, <laughs> remains an all-male club refusing to accept women. How difficult it must be for some of their members, therefore, to see Mary Magdalene here in the thick of it, with Jesus in his life, with Jesus at his death, with Jesus at the resurrection. Women's history may have been denied, and the equality presented at the resurrection 
translated into a lesser story, but God reminds us of where we belong. As Mary Ann Seagart, the author of The Authority Gap, Why Women Are Still Taken Less Seriously Than Men, writes, the Garrick may be an elite club, but its membership matters precisely because it's elite. Its members hold powerful positions in government, the judiciary, the media, and the arts. These are people who run the country. And if women are excluded from this elite, then the establishment will remain overwhelmingly male. And that matters for all of us, she concludes. The audacity. I mean, really, women, women are still being asked to be seen and treated as equal. Can you believe it? <laughs> the resurrection, we are confronted with the reality of the divine encountering human constraints and overcoming them. No one denies that we die, that our bodies fail, that our bodies do not do what we would like them to do. Yet here, we are met with the sign and symbol of a new story, a new beginning, and challenged to review the empirical, but also to recognize the mystery. Can you believe it? We read in the book of Acts, then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to God. Good news, everybody. There has been a systems update. God is no respecter of persons. Peter is responding to something that he too has come to realize. God does not select a certain type of person with particular characteristics, a particular way of speaking, with a particular bank balance or swag. You may have lost your mojo. You may feel helpless. You may be feeling lonely or afraid. You may not be invited into the club. You may be feeling like it always rains on you, but you are invited to this table of love. Can you believe it? Today is about knowledge resurrected about the fear of knowing and believing and the implication of holding on to truth. The other disciple, though he saw the remnants of Jesus' clothing, did not go in. If we believe that Jesus Christ lived, died, was buried, and on the third day was raised from the dead, then where is there to hide? We are exposed to an inexplicable reality that holds us accountable to love. We have the opportunity opened before us of restoration, restitution, and equity. We can now ask for courage for help to stand, for help to change, and believe that our prayers will be answered. 
all the broken parts and pieces of our lives are held in the light of this new dawn. Can you believe it? It's not her fault, you see. I mean, the black French superstar, Aya Nakamura. It's not her fault that she's black, gifted, and French. It's not her fault that her parents moved to France when she was a baby, and that she's a global phenomenon at age 28. Her songs have been streamed more than seven billion times. She's the face of one of the country's most famous perfume brands. And last year, she sold out three Paris gigs in the space of 15 minutes. And yet, in the words of one journalist, there has been a vicious outpouring of bile from the far right following unconfirmed rumors that this French Malian pop star may be chosen to sing at the opening ceremony of the Paris Olympic Games later this summer. But you know, that's just the French. It's all okay, because at least here in the UK, major Tory donor Frank Hester apologized. He apologized after repeatedly, after reportedly, I beg your pardon, saying MP Diane Abbott <laughs> made him, made him want to hate all black women and that she should be shot. He was talking about me. I mean, imagine. Imagine being black and French or black and British, daring to believe that you can maybe, maybe, maybe just be judged by the content of your character, by your achievements, and not by the color of your skin. Can you believe it? In a beautiful scene in the exquisite debut film by Celine Song, Past Lives, the female protagonist, Na Young, says to her husband, you are forgetting the part where I love you. He responds, I don't forget that. I have trouble believing it sometimes. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to him, they have taken away my Lord. And I do not know where they have laid him. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. That same voice is calling you and me today. Can you believe it? Calling you as you are because of who you are to see a resurrection that does not ignore or erase your wounds, but recognizes them and transforms them. Can you believe it? Calling you to take a place at this table of love that turns any deficit model upside down and gives sense to your story. Can you believe it? Christ Calling you to take all your life, all your experience, though that you will experience, and ask you to place this in the hands of a God who sees all that you can become. Can you believe it? 
and calling you to be whole in a love that passes all understanding, a love that holds and accepts, that shapes and celebrates you. Can you believe it? The resurrection gives us a new reality. This reality of our imagination liberated from human, limited human perceptions, of our human experience transformed, of being somehow allowed to stand in the presence of truth, of this love, and to be unafraid. This is what makes us whole. The empty tomb stares at us as a testimony to the liberation of the imagination enabled by a new revelation. Our identities are located in an eternal and cosmic abode. To be here, to be here on earth, to live, to love, and die is not the end of the story. Ours, ours is a story written in love and written in eternity. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the world, for the church, for all in need, and for those who have asked for our prayers.
since your voices have been so beautifully warmed up by Mariama's sermon, I've got no hesitation in asking you, please, to respond when I say Alleluia with an Alleluia as loudly as you dare. <laughs> Let us pray. Holy God, your love is come again, like wheat that springeth green. On the first day of the week, we thank you, Resurrection God, for the first day of renewed life, a life we can live in the glorious light of your upending of all our old, old, our old certainties, as we shall sing, endless is the victory, thou, O death, hast won. Alleluia. We thank you for the Easter world that springtime promises us, for the beauty and fertility it brings, and the hope that rises in our hearts. Like John in that first Easter garden, we stand before a dark and empty tomb, our expectations confounded, distressed, puzzled, and fearful for your world today. And as we do so, we pray for all that is threatened. We pray for the grace to glimpse resurrection light where life is threatened by greed and neglect and to commit ourselves to carry that light and hope wherever it is needed in every way we can, that the world may live peacefully and justly in the glorious light of your upending of our old certainties. For endless is the victory, thou, O death, hast won. Alleluia. Alleluia. We thank you for the people of your world, for resourcefulness and imagination, for the legacy of art, music, words, and thought that we have inherited, for our different cultures and beliefs. Like Peter, confronted by foreign soldiers and not seeing the angels, we peer into the dark and empty tomb, angry, confused, mistrustful of the differences between us. We pray for the grace to recognize resurrection light in even the most challenging situations and to commit ourselves to shine that light and hope wherever it is needed in every way we can, that all people may live in the glorious light of your upending of all our old certainties. For endless is the victory thou, O death, hast won. Alleluia. Alleluia. We thank you for each other, for the love we receive and the love we can give for the support of friends and families, and for each other here this morning. Like Mary, with eyes blurred with tears, trembling to enter the dark and empty tomb, despairing, lost, we pray that we too may stand steadfast enough to be flooded with resurrection light, even as we face our worst fears. We hold to your love, everyone we know to be in need of that light today, including Amy and Leo, Joe, Sarah, David, Taney, Fiona, Annie, Margaret, and Puck, and for Rosie, who died recently and Milo, who mourns her. We commit ourselves to the light and hope wherever we can, that the communities in which we live may know the glorious night of your upending of our old certainties. For endless is the victory thou, our death, hast won. Alleluia. Alleluia. Holy God, 
May we know your love in our world, in every flower we admire today, and every piece of chocolate we enjoy. Amen. After we've shared the piece together, we'll sing our offertory hymn, and during that hymn, we'll be taking a collection. If you are able to contribute to the work of this church, we would be incredibly grateful. The church is open seven days a week for anyone who would like to come, and we think of our offertory as really giving back to God what has already been given to us. So whatever you're able to give, we would be very grateful. There is a tap donation as it goes around the pews. Um, it's set at five pounds, but you know, twice is 10. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you're able to give, we would be very grateful, as I said. So uh, please, if you're able, please stand for the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
risen Christ Jesus, in this bread soon to be broken and this wine soon to be poured out, may we know you as the fire that burns within us, that we may bring light to your world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in all people the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Wonderful the work of your hands, O God. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Savior, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for us, and with a love Stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ will come. 
God, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that Christ intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, O oh God, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Bring us at the last with Mary, the mother of God, St. James, St. Pancras, St. Bartholomew, and all the saints, to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, eternal God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor Blessing and honor, glory and power, glory and power, he rules forever and ever, he rules forever and ever, amen, amen. Let us pray in the words that Jesus gave us each in our own language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Everyone is welcome to receive communion or a blessing here at St. James's. If you're in the gallery, communion will be brought to you. And if you're in the body of the church, after we've asked you to sit down, perhaps you could come forward from the front rows, working your way back. There will be three places at the front here uh, which you can receive communion. If you would like a blessing, please just place your hand across like this so that we know a blessing is what you would be asking for. You may receive the bread and the wine, or the bread or the wine. And all are welcome at this table of love. Please do sit down.
Christians to the Paschal Victim. Together we pray. God of life and love, 
we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ. As we have received these gifts of your creation, may we go out with joy and gratitude to live as witnesses to your hope and justice for the whole earth. Amen. Just a brief notice from me to say a huge thank you to everyone who has worked so hard to make this Holy Week and Easter come to life. Thank you especially to our hugely hardworking Verger team. You can see them at the back there. Thank you very much to them. Thank you so much to all our musicians, all those who have decorated the church, all those who've made food. A special thanks to those who stayed overnight in these very pews last night and prayed with us as we waited for the dawn of resurrection. We would like to donate to you the plants that are in the aisle. If you'd like to take a plant away with you, please do. If you would like to make a donation yourself in return for that plant, then David at the front here, please wave. And Maggie, who is here, would be pleased to take a donation from you if that's what you would like to do. But please do take them away. Uh, and you can see, if you're new to St. James's, if you're visiting us uh, perhaps for the first time or the first time in a long time, you can see at the back of the order of service a lot of the different things that are going on. Please do go to our website, visit us, check us out, talk to any of us today. We would love to welcome you into this vibrant and imaginative community that we have a privilege to be part of. We are going to sing the Hallelujah Chorus um, shortly, and I really did mean it. If you can't sing, we especially want you to sing. So if you do need the music, there is some more music at the back, but after the blessing, we'll all be joining in that together. It just remains for us to wish you a very, very happy Easter, and please stand for our final hymn. Amen. Yeah. 
God the Creator, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has overcome the forces of death and hell, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Christ, empower you and fill you with peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this Easter and forever. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah.